In this video, we're going to do some common commands, some common things that you should know about your Raspberry Pi 3, especially if you're new. Uh, some of you might even learn something new that you didn't know and you've been using Raspberry Pi for a while. But just things that I get asked questions all the time in the comment section just to kind of clear the air, let you know what's going on. Um, the first thing is just start select commands and emulation station. You can hit select when you're in the actual systems. When you're in the systems, you can actually jump to any letter you want by selecting around here and then clicking A to confirm. You can sort your game list by descending instead of asc ascending if you'd like. And then you can also edit any kind of metadata you want as well. You can hit the start button anywhere in Emulation Station. You should get the main menu. In the main menu, you have the scraper. This just scrapes games, the artwork if you need them, the descriptions, sound settings. Uh, a lot of systems, you, you'd be surprised, actually start at 70%. So this is your system volume. So good, this could go up or down. It also affects when you're in the games as well. Um, you can enable sounds on or off. Next one is UI settings. You have uh, screensaver settings, on-screen help, quick system selection, what kind of transition settings you want, and then the actual, um, the actual theme that you want. As you see, we are in the Hyper Pi, but there's also Motion Blue. There's some really beautiful ones out there as well, and this is where you go to change all that. Other settings, you have save metadata on exit and parse game list only. Configure input, this is where you would configure your controls. I get asked this all the time, like, oh, where do I go to change my controls? Just go into configure and input. It should detect your controller. If it doesn't detect your controller, then you need to install drivers of some sort or set up your Bluetooth so the Pi is finding your controller first. Once it find, finds it, it's just a matter of setting the controls. Once you set your controls here and configure input, it's gonna, it's gonna propagate that for most of the systems except the ones that uh, are retro arc based or that don't work with the libretro. So that might require some more configurations, but we're not gonna get into that on this video. And then you have quit. Restart emulation station just restarts the emulation station front end, doesn't actually restart your entire system. Uh, restart the system actually turns off the processor, turns it back on, total restart. Shut down, shuts it down. Quit emulation station brings you into the main menu. So another really big thing of where most things are at in Emulation Station is the RetroPie menu. And within the RetroPie menu, you have the option to change your audio settings, to hook up your Bluetooth devices, to, ch to install new themes. You have the File Manager, which is uh, a kind of similar like Windows Explorer for a computer. You have Raspberry Pi Config. There's some interesting things in there about the actual uh, Emulation Station and some advanced settings. Um, RetroArc is, is available here. Um, but the biggest one where you're mostly used is the RetroPie setup. Within the setup, you can update uh, your actual script. Right now on 4.1.12, as you see, it's this version. And uh, you can go ahead and how to update that is you would say uh, update RetroPie script and then update all installed packages. That will not only update the script, but also update all the installed packages, the latest and the greatest. All your packages are in here. You can see some videos I've done on adding new emulators and things like that. That's a whole video in itself, and I have those on my channel if you're interested, how to install additional emulators. Uh, configuration and tools. The main thing you're gonna be going into here for is uh, resetting your controllers. So, um, you know, for example, I go into Emulation Station here, it resets your controller. Samba Share is a way to transfer over ROMs fairly simply. Uh, splash screens, Wi-Fi, a lot, of, a lot of things in here if you need to access them. Okay, so let's just back out of here, back, um, and then perform reboot is on here as well. So that's what you have in RetroPie setup. Now, sometimes you get kicked out of emulation station, and one way to do this manually is just quit emulation station. And when you quit or something happens, you get brought to this screen here. And as you can see, you can see how fat hot the CPU is here, you can see what day it is, all sorts of other things going on, how much available space you have on your uh, micro SD card that's in there, and you're, you're at a command line. Now, this is all Linux based, so if you need to learn a command, you can just go into some sort of Linux, uh, Linux uh, tutorial or Linux you know, database and you can learn all sorts of things. But some of the most basic things you're going to do is just emulation station. If you just type emulation station, the, the Pi will just go ahead and boot into emulation station. The same thing will happen in a track mode. If back at that previous stream, you just type in the word a track. And so instead of going to emulation station, it's going to boot into a track mode. Both are just two different front end systems for your Raspberry Pi. And 
the command line as well. Now, if you get here and you just want to shut down your computer, you don't want to necessarily go back into emulation station. One of the most common things that I do is shut down. Now, you have to type sudo first. Sudo basically means that you're the, the primary person and you're saying you do it, over override any kind of uh, uh, permission controls to get through there. So sudo shutdown is an easy way to do it. The only thing with doing it this way is it's going to have a 60-second timer. So it's not going to actually shut down for a full 60 seconds. So if you want to shut it down within 60 seconds, there's a couple commands on here. I think probably one of the easiest ones to do is this one here, which is sudo shutdown space, shut down space, h now. And that's going to shut it down almost immediately. Um, my green light's blinking. I'm just going to tell you when it's actually off. Solid green, off. Okay, so as you see there, it takes about three to five seconds um, doing it that way. Where if I was not to put the H, the dash H now, it would have taken a full 60 seconds to boot up, to boot down. So there you go, there's a faster way to shut down your Pi. Next thing is how do I get into a track mode? Well, your image does have to have a track mode pre-installed on it. If you just downloaded the regular download, the, the um, noobs or whatever it is from the retropie.uk, that does not come with a track mode. The HyperPie though, and the Motion Blue does come with a track mode. So to do that, you just go to that RetroPie menu, and here we are, and there's a switch to a track mode. So I'm just going to click this and press A. And not only is this going to boot us into a track mode, but it's also going to set it as our default boot, as you see in the upper left-hand corner there. So now anytime we, after we're done here, we shut down, as long as we shut it down within a track mode, then that is our, our new default boot. So rather than booting into emulation station, it will boot into a track mode. If you want to reverse that process, then what you would do is go into a track mode, a track mode setup, and there's a button there that says reboot and emulation station. That will then switch it back over to emulation station. So here we are in the HyperPi track mode, similar to any track mode. I'm just gonna hold down the analog stick here and get down to exit. Now, you, if you press exit here, it's just gonna take you back to that command line. So now that you know those tricks, you can just type the word attract to get back in. Or you could type the word sudo shutdown now and get back in and, and totally exit the Pi if that's what you want to do. Um, some other really common things are going into um, a track mode setup here. This is where you would go back to uh, emulation station and this will set it to the default boot. You can also configure your Wi Fi, show your IP address, go into any configurations you want, audio settings, add a Bluetooth controller, change your intro video. Go into that file manager, generate your favorites list. There's a whole video on that, by the way, generating your favorites list. Check my videos if that's something you want to know more about. You can reboot the system and you can shut. This is an easy way that I shut it down typically is in a, a track mode image. You just go to RetroPie setup, shut down, and I'm done. I don't have to type anything, don't need a keyboard. Very simple. You can also update a track mode. Updating a track mode is separate from that RetroPie update script that I showed you. This simply updates the, the track mode front end does not update the RetroPie script. Those are two different things, just so we're clear. Um, so that's pretty much all that's here in the, um, in the setup here. Now the other common thing is to go into the actual uh, the track mode setup that you're seeing here, the configuration, the controls. Uh, it's gonna be tab on your keyboard, or let's see what it is on these controllers here. It depends on the image, but oftentimes it's one of these upper buttons here. Yeah, so here it is, my right, well, my right button goes to there. Okay, it's my left trigger got me to this 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 uh, menu here. Um, you are going to use your analog stick to move around. Those people who have any issues setting up your your controller doesn't work in a track mode. It's because your controls aren't set up here under controls, and uh, so you go into controls here, and then here's all your controls. The main controls being up, down, left, right, forward, and backwards. Forward meaning you want to select something, and back means you want to get out of the menu you're in and go backwards on a track mode. Those are the main ones. But you can see here, there's some other ones you might wanna use like add to favorites, uh, toggle menus, skip a couple letters, things of that sort. Um, displays, if you wanna get rid of or add collections and displays in the way your main track mode wheel what looks, this is where you're gonna find it here. If you wanna mess with any emulator, emulator settings or generate a ROM list or artwork or things like that, you'll find it here in the emulator list. Some of that stuff you do have to do off 
off of this. You have to do it through your computer, but some of it can be done through here um, as well. Uh, you have some sound settings, intro settings, screensaver, there's some plugins that you can play around with. There's the scraper. And then uh, in general, you just have you know your language, a couple other settings you might want to play with in here. And you just hit back and then back. And then as you can see, now we're back into a track mode. So this is, this is a really overview of a track mode and emulation station and how it works. I think if you just know these few simple things, it'll really help you out. The next thing you probably want to look into is um, RetroArc and how RetroArc works. That's if you're having issues with like arcade controls or N64 controls, that does go through RetroArc or has its own, or Dreamcast, it has its own settings for controls. So that can be a little more difficult, but there's videos on that as well if that's something you need help with. But this, if you know all these little simple things, you can get your way around, get your way around a Raspberry Pi very easily. I hope this video was helpful for you. I did want to make this video because a lot of people ask me in the comments like these really, you know, it's pretty, they're simple questions. Don't get me wrong, but you know, if this, you know, we've all started before, and so if you're new to this, it could be overwhelming at first. It's not like a, a gaming system where it's just you know turn it on, press go, and you're there. There's definitely some more tinkering and some more configuring that has to go in to these, you know, ultimate retro gaming uh, machines we have here, these Raspberry Pis. So uh, if this video was helpful for you, give it a little like. If you subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. I have a lot more videos like this coming, as well as you can see, I've made a lot. And uh, I suggest you check those out as well. And we'll see you on the next one.